We continue on with our intermission report, Spitfire Hockey here on We Digital Productions. Dominic Pop is glad to be along with you. And one of the gentlemen that uh, oversees this entire operation has been an outstanding owner for this hockey club, continues to work hard at it, is Mr. John Savage, the president and co-owner of the Windsor Spitfire. Thanks for doing this with us, Mr. Yeah, Savage. Well, it's great to be here. Um, let's go back to last year, of course. Tough year, no question about it. Uh, uh, Maybe, uh, you know, not making the playoffs. I don't remember that what the last time that was for the Spitfires. But uh, how tough was it for you and the ownership group? To... Well, I think last year, you know, obviously a bit of a rebuilding year. We were up on top. Uh, you know, I remember taking the banner in the in 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 the in the district uh, for our division and so on and so forth. Um, and so when you come off of that, we felt we were in pretty good shape with, with a lot of the players we had, but we uh, started to early on recognize, okay, where we're probably going to end up. Mm -hmm. And there are some very, very strong teams out uh, in, in the market. You know, you've got Saginaw, you've got, always got London, of course, and, and, sure. and up north as well. But with Saginaw, um, we knew, okay, our positioning was not, not gonna be great by the end of the year, so perhaps, uh, we should trade in some of the assets that we knew we're going to be moving on and uh, and try to put a bit of a, a rebuild. So that's very early on. We started to take a look at that. Um, you know, it, it did it hurt the team. I, I Yeah, of course, it mm. when you're losing uh, top end players like that, mm. uh, that's going to have an impact. And, uh, you know, the, the net result wasn't great. Uh, except uh, we ended up in the pool, of course, as you know, and uh, came out with, uh, you know, the winning draw on that one. So, and I think uh, you see what we've got on the ice this year. Um, it was, this is going to be a, a huge next step for us. And uh, we're certainly hoping at looking at taking a run for it in the next, uh, in the next two or three years. So. Isn't that what junior hockey is though, Mr. Yeah. Savage, where, you know, you, at some point, you maybe have to take a step back to go two step forward. I, you know, it's junior hockey is a very uh, fickle uh, uh, draw all the time, of course, um, and oftentimes everybody, okay, I'm going in, I'm putting all my chips in, I trade everything off, and I get back. Um, we had put a, uh, um, we tried to make a philosophical change where we were looking at trying to be at the top, we don't have to be the top every time. That's, that's just too difficult to do, but to be very competitive all the time. And then every once in a while, you'll get your breaks, your opportunity and run for it. Um, that was the philosophy that we were trying to work for, not only for the fans, but just from a, you know, who wants to come to our club, right? And that's a good attraction for them. Was it that much more difficult last year because of the run the team had had in previous seasons? Yes. I mean. Yes. You, you've won a Memorial Cup. You had a couple of finals or conference finals. I mean, you had a great run. You had you know? a huge run, yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, you, you yeah. don't make... Did it make it that much more tough because of the run you had had pre previously? In terms of not making the playoffs, yeah. that sort of thing? Yeah. Uh, you know, you... <coughs> well, the bar was we, The bar was very hard, but, you know, we've been around a long time in, sure. in the just in the world, in the business world, you, you kind of, okay, I see where we're going to end up. So it, it takes a bit of the edge off. You kind of knew where we were going. Yeah. I thought we would have at least gotten into the final because, you, you know, there was a struggle near the end there to, to try to pick up some games, but that didn't happen. So, yeah, it was a disappointment, certainly a disappointment for the fans, and, and that's not we, what we had hoped for, but uh, certainly I think what we're going to see in the next couple of years here is going to be very, very exciting. So. I think one of the things that your ownership group uh, has made clear is that you're a very loyal group to, to your personnel. Uh, last year, I mean, this, it's no secret, people were unhappy. They you know, were calling for Bowler to be dismissed. Um, you know, you went through the pandemic, of course, which was tough, all of those things, but yet you kept your people working, you kept Bill Bowler on, and I know you have a lot of faith in, in, in the GM Bowler, rightfully so. Uh, I think he's a tremendous hockey man. Uh, why, why is this ownership group uh, so loyal and, and uh, just have that much belief? Well, from a, a business philosophical uh, uh, 
the, the three partners, my brother uh, Stephen and, and Brian Schwab, uh, we've been in business together for over 40 years mm -hmm. now, and that's been our philosophy since day one. Mm -hmm. um, we went through some pretty tough times in the, in the business world and certain segments of our business, um, but we were uh, always of the opinion, if at all possible, you never lay people off, you always provide that continuity of work for people. And uh, we would work towards preventing that from happening. And we would also work to making sure that there was enough business out here that we could always provide that, uh, that employment opportunity for people. And uh, there's a huge reward in that just interpersonally that, okay, you can rely on us as a, as a stable organization, but there was also that uh, generated a lot of loyalty from, from people who work mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. So the, the real issue is to try to make sure that you're selecting the right people. And if you select the right people, and you make the odd miss, but you know, at some point they'll, they'll figure that out and, and we'll separate ways. But at the end of the day, you pick the right people, you're loyal to them. And if you did pick the right people, then okay, there's gonna be little ups and downs mm -hmm. and it'll all work out in the end. And that's... You've won at every level. Some people may not be aware that of course, you own the Sal Vipers, you own the Lakeshore Canadians, uh, you have the Spitfires, you won a Memorial Cup, a couple, a couple of Schmaltz Cups now, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you don't have any more fingers left for, no, for, for these rings. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's too heavy, I think. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Uh, what keeps you motivated? And what, uh, what, uh, how much more do you have in you as, as an ownership group to, to keep this thing going? Well, we made a commitment, uh, as you know, and I think this is fairly well known when uh, we were all together with Bob and, and Warren of the group. Um, <clears throat> there was a time when, you know, in the 2016, 2017, 2018, in that area, um, we, st we started to take a look, okay, they were moving on in their, in their careers, and so we weren't really the hockey guys, so maybe it's time for us to go too. And then when we had a, uh, there was almost a deal on the table and when that was starting to fall apart and the rumors on the street, and then we said, okay, we'll commit to, to staying with this for, for another period of time. Um, and we're in that period of time. And we still get joy out of coming to the rink and hanging out and being part of the, the organization. And I think we'll be here for a while, given what we've got coming on this year. Yeah. This will be very exciting for the next yeah. few years. So, well, we're, we're certainly lucky and blessed to have you as an yeah. ownership group uh, in today's world. It's, oh, thank it's you. tough. It's a tough business. That's that's for sure. You say you're not hockey guys, but I think by now it's fair to say that you guys have learned uh, some of the hockey stuff, and, and yeah, part well, of your decision making thinking. comes through that. Yeah, I'm, you know, I always say, yeah. Again, we go back to we hire the people we think can yeah. deliver yeah. and and we sit back and, and give them enough rope that yeah we let them do their thing so that's been our management style if you have issues or we see issues we of course we'll step in and and provide that assistance where it's necessary but uh, yeah. we don't have to do that very often so the so league is forever evolving Mr. Savage I mean obviously it's changed over the years it's grown in some areas some other areas have been challenges uh, one of the things that's changing this year is the commissioner. Uh, boy, it's going to be strange not having Dave Branch at the helm. Uh, I know since my days started, he was the guy, and to see him not there is a little strange for me anyways. But uh, talk to me about the new commissioner and uh, where do you think this is going to go now? Well, just as a, as a, as a comment to that, uh, to, to preface the new commissioner, I would say, you know, uh, David Branch has, has been a phenomenal commissioner mm -hmm. for our, our league. Um, there's a lot of uh, things that David has delivered uh, outside of franchise value, but has really created a professional organization mm -hmm. uh, of, the, of the OHL. And he was uh, obviously very big as part of the uh, um, running of the CHL, creating that, making sure that that, that came through. And that's huge for, uh, for the, uh, the league overall, as you know. Um, so, you know, I was at his retirement last month. Mm -hmm. He's still working in the background. Um, <laughs> and really I, hard for him to well, and actually, yeah. I was on the phone with him yesterday for about an hour <laughs> because we have a, an issue that he, it's, he's taken on as his uh, sure. sort of swan song so portfolio. Consultant so, <laughs> so, yeah, he's consulting. So um, he's there. The, the, the new commissioner coming in... Um, 
you know, there was a lot of exercise to go through to, to make sure that they brought the right person in. I think he's the right person. A um, little premature for me to say, do I like a style yeah. yet or anything? Because uh, he's only been on for about a month. Um, but I think he'll do a, a fine job. Fresh blood, different ideas, as you said earlier. Mm -hmm. This is a, is a thing that's, that's always needed in mm. business. And I think uh, his background uh, and uh, when you see he's a good presence, mm -hmm. thinks well, uh, speaks well on his feet. Uh, now let's, uh, we'll look for the delivery mm -hmm. and I expect that he'll do that. I think one of the things uh, in this world that we're in today, uh, you know, the whole social media aspect, the things off the ice, away from the rink, uh, all have to be dealt with and it's, it's forever growing yeah. and changing. Uh, how tough is that going to be and, and how important is it to, to address those areas of, of uh, being an, an everyday OHL franchise? We're probably one of the, I, I just maybe just my own perception, but uh, the, what we've done with the team in terms of infrastructuring with the coaches, um, the education of the coaches that gets delivered by the, the league but we've also added uh, some significant elements onto the club that go the extra mile to ensure that there's only so much, just like children, the only, the, there's only so much that I can provide. We're not the parents, but we certainly provide an, on, an environment here, I think, which probably exceeds anything else that exists in sports today with respect to, you know, uh, uh, sports uh, psychologists and those sorts of things. Those are access points that uh, our kids have. And they're spoken to every week mm -hmm. by these people. And uh, we try to make sure that uh, we're aware of if things and education is, is a big part of that. But we certainly take that very seriously because at the end of the day, that's pro if, if I've got a problem there, I'm going to have a problem in the stands because, mm -hmm. you know, People get upset about a lot of things, and whether it's within our control or not, we get labeled with it. So, Speaking of the fans, I'm glad you brought them up, uh, Mr. Savage. Uh, obviously an important element of any success for any OHL franchise. Fans here in Windsor, I know for a long time, have been very faithful and yep. loyal to this hockey club. Uh, how good is that for you to, uh, to deal with and, uh, you know, what, what else would you like to do for the fans to, to ensure that they continue supporting the Spitfires? Well, I, you know, I come from my business background, so right. I'll set aside hockey for a second. When, when we came in, part of our philosophy was to ensure that there's an hour of hockey, mm -hmm. but you're here for three hours. Right. I want to make sure that we provide entertainment for three hours so that not only you're getting value for your your dollar it also is starting to attract a different um, a, 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 a different element of some of the fans so you're you know I want to come on this is just an opportunity to, for entertainment let's go there and you're entertained for three hours right that's and that's good value for your dollar so there's the hardcore hockey people and then there's everybody else right sure. so and uh, so we try to create loyalty now in a bigger in a bigger sphere certainly can't uh, deny the, the the fan value and the entertainment value here that's for sure the OHL has always been so uh, special uh, how anxious are you to get this season going oh <laughs> I wish we were playing a game tonight yeah yeah, yeah. it's well, coming after the, well after the first couple of uh, the exhibition games sure. yeah, there's some real well, in our draft picks have been exceptional this year, so we're very much looking forward Short to Short time away. It'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Savage, appreciate the time. Okay. Uh, I know you're always busy, but uh, continued success to you and the team and the family. Okay. And uh, thank you for doing what you do. Okay. All right. Mr. John Savage, co-owner and president of the Windsor Spitfires. A quick timeout. More Spitfire coverage here on We Digital Productions.